Um, can let me ask this, Maury. Can women teach a man? Oh, I, I, man. <laughs> oh man. I, I know you didn't ask me that question. This is a whole setup question. Because y'all know I don't teach that women could teach. <laughs> I'm going to say it in a way, Moray, that's going to be controversial. So they might not tune into your channel after this. <laughs> not only can women teach, but if you are a person that is only learning from men, you are walking around half retarded. <laughs> Let me say this. I wrote a book um, in 2016. Uh, let's just make sure your audience- Hold on, let me, let, me, let me blow it up real quick. Hold on. There you go. All right, I bought a book in 2016. I wrote a book in 2016 entitled Matriarchs of the Covenant. Um, the book speaks on all of the matriarchs of the Bible. Uh, namely the Old Testament, namely the Old Testament. Um, and I highlight all of the intellectual and spiritual achievements of the women of the Bible. Now, why do I do so? What I learned and observed in the 27 years that I've been an, an Israelite, and, and excuse me, I've been an Israelite 41 years, but in the 27 years of knowing myself as, as, as an Israelite, the things that I observed is that even in places that said that they have respect for women, you can truly see, Moray, that they really don't have respect for women. Even among Israelites that feel that women could teach, Moray, I got to tell you, they don't really feel that way. Because the proof mm -hmm. is not in what we say. The proof is in what we do. Mm -hmm. Talk is so cheap, people do it in their sleep. Yeah. And what I notice is that our women are extremely marginalized. I watched in the same communities that said, we don't teach that women can't teach. I watched in those same communities where they push women to just learn sewing. And for the brothers, they said, you gotta read every book possible. But for the sisters, there was a push to just, y'all, y'all make these garments. Now, let me say something more. Culturally speaking, does that make sense? Absolutely. Women were definitely garment makers. They weren't the only garment makers, however. Women were also teachers. Don't we have a woman called Deborah? Who is a married woman? But I want to say something to you, Moray, and I want to say something to your, to your audience. Before the Bible tells us that Deborah is married, before it even tells us that she's married or who she's married to, the first way she is described is not being the wife of so-and-so. The first way is she be, that she is described in the Bible is not being a wife. The first description the Bible gives of a Deborah is that she is a judge and a prophetess. Why is that significant, mm -hmm. Moray? Because there are literally Israelites here teaching women that your greatness is in who your husband is. There are literally teachers out here telling these women, Moray, that your greatness is in who your husband is. Need I remind you, Moray, before the Bible tells us who her husband is, before the Bible even mentioned that she's married, it tells us she's a judge and a prophetess. Why does the Bible place emphasis on that before even describing that she's married? It's common sense, Moray. We have to understand that our women are capable of immense contributions. And this was the design from at the beginning. We talked about something called common sense and that's a reoccurring theme. And I'm gonna to continue to say this. Notice how Eve does not fall under the authority of Adam until after the sin, which mm. obviously then means prior to the sin, it was even Stephen. That's right. Or else how could the Bible say that she is now under her husband if this was the design from the beginning? So mm -hmm. the design that the creator saw from the beginning was that the two were even Stephen, intellectually speaking and spiritually speaking. The two, Moray, were truly one. You cannot truly be one 
if he is the only intellectual. You cannot truly be one if he is the real spiritual one. But you can truly be said to be one when you are both intellectual. You can truly be said to be one when you are both spiritual. I want us to notice something. The first woman the Bible talks about, I don't know what the people out here are saying. I heard the name Eve. But I got to tell you, as a <laughs> spokesman of the Bible, of which we are as mores, right? As teachers, we're spokesmen, right? Mm -hmm. This does don't say more over here as a title. I'm really a more in the community, as you right. are as well. I was mm -hmm. given this title, <clears throat> not by people on Facebook, but right. by elders with many years of mm -hmm. practicing Torah. That's right. Right? So in saying that, more, we got to teach this book. Right. Because the Bible says the first woman is called Chawa. Not Eve. Chawa. And this is why mm -hmm. Hebrew is so important. Because if we say in Eve, all we're thinking about is apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, one of the most famous brands of apple juice is Eve, associated with the store. <laughs> what are we talk about here? The Bible says her name is Chawa. In the Bible, it says she is the mother of all living. So when you ask Moray, the average Hebrew, what is the meaning of Eve's name, Moray? You know what they will say to you, Moray? They'll say Eve means the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you this, Moray, that is only partially true. I'll tell mm. you why. The word for life in Hebrew is chaya. Chaya. That's how you say life. Or you can say chai, which is spelled in Hebrew, chet and yod. Chai. If you want to say living in Hebrew, it's chaya, and that's spelled chet, yod, hey. I want you to notice something, Moray. When you open the text, Eve's name is not spelled chet, yod, hey. Eve's name is spelled chet, wav, hey. Mm. The Bible doesn't call Eve chaya, which is living. Mm -hmm. The Bible calls her chawa with a W, which means to speak life. Open up Psalms chapter 19. Look at verses two through three. Day unto day speaks. Matter of fact, let me read it. Because <laughs> one thing I'm big on is not butchering the text by missing a single word. I want this to be perfect. Psalms 19 verse two says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament tells of his handiwork. Day after day utters speech, and night after night declares knowledge. Well, Moray, the word for declares, as in declares knowledge, in Psalms 19 and three, that's the word Yehawe. Yehawe, spelled in Hebrew, Yod, Chet, Wav, He. The root, however, is Chawa, Eve's name. The word used in Psalms 19.3 for declares knowledge is Chawa. That's Eve's name. How could we even imagine that women can't teach when the name that God gives the first woman is to declare knowledge?